Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K video. I am so hopeful and I do apologize to everybody who's been waiting to watch this. I don't know what has happened with my Facebook updates, but um, something has gone completely haywire with my phone and my um, computer and it looks like you guys can see me, but I for some reason can't see my own video running, so I just don't know for sure what is going on. Um, so I'm trying and uh, hopefully this video will work this time. It looks like it's live on my phone, but like I said, the computer is not showing me that it's live. So I'm hopeful that I can get this to actually go live and post, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, um, I am going to show you real quickly how to make these pillow box dies or these pillow box um, stockings. They're really cute and they're made with the tags and trimming stamp set and the trim your stocking thinlets dies. And these are both going to be available for purchase through my online store uh, starting on September 1st. So um, hopefully you guys can go out and take a look at them and um, hopefully you've got your catalog so you can take a look at them and put them on your wish list because they're definitely very cute. So um, let me show you the stamp set and the dies first. The stamp set is called Tags and Trimmings, and it's got a couple of real nice sentiments in it. Um, it's got some holly leaves, uh, a little holly berry, a couple of buttons, snowflakes, uh, two from, a little tag, um, some little dots that you can use. And then there is a die set that coordinates with it, and obviously this is the, the big stocking die here, and um, the little uh, pillow box piece of the die is this one. Um, for the stocking, there are a couple of pieces that uh, run across it that you can use for a little trim on it. And a little thing that looks like a little pom-pom trim that runs across it. Um, there's a little jingle bell, some toe and heel pieces. Uh, there's a little cuff for the stocking as well and a pretty snowflake. Uh, there's a tag and that actually coordinates with the stamp tag here. And the holly dies coordinate with the holly stamps in the set. And then the little circle dies coordinate with the buttons as well. So um, definitely a nice little stamp set with lots of little pieces to go with it. Um, this slot die that you see here is actually going to be used to cut a little hole in the top of the stocking so that you can pull a ribbon through it. So um, it makes a nice little bonus there. So let me get this cleared out of the way and um, I'll get rolling with showing you how to make these. So the first thing is that I made several of them, and um, I got a piece of my embellishment stuck. Um, I made several of these, and as far as the paper goes, I found the paper size six inches by six and three quarters to be a good size to work with when I was using these dies because I could place them side by side and run them both through the big shot. Um, if you get paper six inches wide, it will go through without any problem and without overhanging and tearing up your dies or anything like that. So. Um, that's what I was using for the paper and um, then I went ahead and um, cut out the stocking pieces already and I've cut the little cuffs and things these were cut from the uh, quilted or yeah, quilted Christmas um, designer series paper six by six designer series paper. it's a real cute pack of paper so um, you can take a look at that in the catalog again it's up towards the front so I'll cut the little stocking pieces out um, and this is how they fit on here and basically I did a little pre-test fit with these um, before I did my stamping so that I could do the stamping and embossing on it um, we're gonna go ahead and emboss a sentiment and it's from the tags and trimming stamp set it says celebrate the season you can use a little Versamark ink um, go ahead and ink up my stamp and stamp it down here. I have the clear mount version of the set. If you have the wood mount version, you may want to use a stamp on the jig so that you can see a little bit better where you're stamping things. And then we're going to take a little white stamp and emboss powder and I keep mine in a little Ziploc container and um, then I can use a spoon with it and sprinkle it on and flick it back into the, the extra pieces back into the container when I'm done embossing this piece. Um, next is the heat tool and it's going to be a little bit of a racket and uh, I'll try not to talk over it but unfortunately there's nothing I can do to uh, stop the racket we're just going to do some quick heat embossing
All right, got that all done, and I'm going to set this aside for a second while I let it cool. Um, the next thing that I did was went ahead and stuck the little pieces on, the die cut pieces on for the top and the bottom. So I used a little multi-purpose liquid glue. Um, you don't need to goop it all the way out to the edges. If you do, you'll end up with kind of a gooey mess, and I don't think you want that. So just put a little glue on it. And um, I found multi-purpose liquid glue to be the easiest to use because it gave me a little bit of time to wiggle things around and make sure they were in the right spot. Um, since these dies do go edge to edge on your die cuts, it's a little bit easier if you can sort of maneuver things around um, before it dries or before it sticks completely on. So here's the little toe part of the stocking. And then we're going to put the heel on. And just so you know, when you're sticking these on, the stitched part of the, the die cut, the, the piece that looks like stitched, goes towards the inside of the, the die, not or toward the cut, not that way. So it goes on the inside. So the stitch marks are down this part of the die cut. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stick that together. And I'm going to do a quick check here and see if um, anybody's able to see me out on Facebook Live yet. I'm hoping that you are. But if not, hopefully I can get the video to post here at some point. Um, like I said, it's acting all crazy, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on. Um, anyway, so uh, um, I think it looks like I might be alive. So I'm kind of like, yay, I see that two people are viewing me. So I'm hopeful that this is actually working this time. <laughs> like I said, I don't know what's been going on. Facebook did an update, and it's been acting crazy this morning. So um Anyway, so I'm going to take this piece. This is actually going to be your pillow box on the back of your die cut, or on the back of your stocking. And um, I, I tried to use the bone folder and, you know, try to make it, you know, do a nice uh, looking professional way to, to sort of round these and start breaking up the fibers. But I found that the easiest way to do it really um, was just to do it on the edge of my desk. And I'm going to move the phone down here a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And um, basically just take it and sort of run it along the edge of your desk to start curling the die cuts a little bit so that they're easier to put together at the end. So doing the same thing with this one. All right, I'll move the phone back up here. Hopefully you can see it again. All right. So got that done. Um, the next thing I did was went ahead and started putting the adhesive on the edges. Uh, I found tear and tape adhesive to be the easiest one to use. It was far less messy. Um, I had tried the multi-purpose liquid glue, but it just kind of made a big gooey mess of everything. So I found tear and tape to be easier. Um, and I put it on the silicone craft sheet. You don't have to do that, but I did it just because sometimes I don't glue things straight and then the glue goops over and then it's stuck to everything and not where I want it to be. So um did that and then turned it into the same thing on the other side. And you want to get your tear and tape up to the end, up as close to the end here as you can get it, um, of your die cut so that it seals up all the way along the edges. So here we go. Let me trim off the other side. Um, the next step that I did was to go ahead and fold it along the score lines. So again, just making things easier as I'm going to assemble it. So I took this, folded it along my score line here, used my bone folder and gave it a good crease, good rubbed it here so that um, we get a good fold in it. Um, I also found it easier to go ahead and start creasing on the rounded lines before I assembled it as well, so that sort of got things going the direction that I wanted it to go. And um, so went ahead and pre-scored those and got those ready. Uh, this little tab is actually going to tuck up underneath, so we're going to go ahead and fold that up and get that scored and ready to go. And then same thing on the actual stocking. We're going to do the same thing where I'm going to start pre-folding it. that it's a little bit easier when I'm going ahead and assembling the stocking. All right, the next thing is just sticking the um, two pieces together. The tab goes down towards the bottom and the little slot here goes towards the top. 
I found it easiest to go ahead and lay things out. Start peeling my tear and tape adhesive. Um, and you can see here, hopefully you can see it anyway, that I've got a little bit of overhang on here. So all you have to do is just take your finger and sort of flick it in so that it's not gooey all over the inside of your box. Um, but if you ever have any little bit of overhang like that, that's all there is to it, the only trick to it. So um, there you go. I found it easier to go ahead, line up the two spots here in the corner, and that's where I started adhering things. And then ran it down the rest of the stocking. All right. Then flipped it over here. Got my tear and tape out of the way. Folded it over. And then just closed it up kind of like a book or a sandwich or whatever you want to call it. But um, put the two sides together. Your top should be pretty well matched up at that point as well. And then I took my bone folder and kind of ran it over to make sure I got some good, everything is adhered completely. Um, this piece, you can go ahead and sort of squeeze it and start to open it. Take your little tab. If you want to, you can put a little tear and tape adhesive on here when you tuck it up under and fold this in. And then go down the inside and use your bone folder and stick it down. I'm not doing that just yet, just because I don't know exactly what I'm going to put in here. And I want to make sure that it's something that I can get to go in and out easily. Uh, before I stick the bottom of it shut. The next thing that I'm going to do is I took the 1 8 inch circle punch and I'm going to punch a couple little holes in here where I'm going to pull the ribbon through. I sort of punched them one on top of the other so that um, would give me a little bit bigger hole because actually I'm not using ribbon. I called it the wrong thing. This is the mini tinsel trim and it comes in red and green or I'm sorry it comes in green and green. <laughs> Listen to me. It comes in um, uh, red and silver is what I'm trying to say. So um, make some cute little things for packaging. So I've already cut a piece, tied a little bow hopefully. I tied it in a hurry so hopefully it'll hold here. Um, then I'm just going to stick it here through the hole that I've punched, pull it up, fold in the top, tuck it through the slot that I've already pre-cut in here, fold the top over, pull the remainder of the little ribbon out, And that's all there is to assembling them. So they're pretty simple to put together. Uh, one last thing that I did is I did die cut two of the snowflake um, images from the, the dies. Just cut them out of Whisper White cardstock. I stamped the little button in uh, real red ink on a piece of Whisper White cardstock and cut it out with the die. And I'm just going to stick it on here as a little embellishment for the stocking. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Like I said, they're super simple to put together and a lot of fun. And um, just remember that these products are all going to be available starting on September 1st through my online store. So if you're interested in ordering anything, let me know. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help you out in any way that I can. Um, stop by my blog tomorrow, stampwithamyk.com, and I'm going to be doing a couple of alternative projects. Um, that don't include the stocking front. Um, they're just some little pillow box things that I will show you how to create. Um, starting or starting, sorry, on uh, <laughs> show you how to create on my blog post tomorrow, and um, like you can use those for anything: birthdays, Halloween, Christmas, whatever you want to do. So a little bit more um, range with it if you don't use a stocking piece. But I'll show you how to put those together tomorrow. Um, let me know if you have any questions about anything. Oh, one thing I did want to show you um, on the back side of these is that a standard issue gift card does fit perfectly inside these little pockets. So um, that was one little bonus that I found and I was happy to see that. Um, you can also fit little treats, little candies, whatever inside it, um, small gifts, but um, I was happy to see that the gift cards fit inside there perfectly. Um, I have my fingers crossed that this video will actually show up and work for you guys on Facebook Live. Like I said, I can see there are a couple of people viewing. Um, I'm not seeing any comments, but uh, I'm hopeful that this video is going to work. And um, let me know if you have any questions. And if it doesn't work, I may just uh, give it a rest for today and try it again tomorrow. And hopefully I can get the video to work then. So thanks so much for watching. And um, feel free to stop my, by my blog for more information and more details. Have a good day.